Today, I'm covering the top 10 cards, the legendary Hank Aaron. Playing. Hank Aaron wants the ball to beat left center and don't. Who many considered the home run king. His stats across his career were amazing. 25 time All Star, 755 home runs, 3,700 hits, a 155 OPS plus, and 143 war. Easily a top 10 player. Speaking of top 10, let's start off with number 10 on this list, which is the 1958 Hires Root Beer. Now, there's two different versions of this card. There's one where the panel has been ripped off and one that has the full panel intact. For this list, we're going to be talking about the one that has it intact. Now, a mid-grade example of this is going to cost you at a minimum of $500. But once you get into higher grades, for example, an 8 has sold over 4000 now, I've seen some of these at card shows, not the Hank Aaron specifically, but some of the root beer cards, uh, but they've all had their panels chopped off and they're really, really cool if you're able to grab one for your PC because they don't come up often. In the number nine spot, we have the 1959 Home Run Derby. Now, the Home Run Derby wasn't an annual event like it is today with the All-Star Game. This Home Run Derby was actually a TV show and these cards were here to commemorate it. So a little bit different formatting than it is here today, but it's still really cool to have back at the end of the 1950s. If you're looking at a one in this card, you're going to be paying a minimum of $500 with grades like a seven going for 6,000. Up next in the number eight spot, we have a hand cut card and that is from also from 1959 and that is a bazooka. Now there isn't too many sales of these authentic versions go for $1,000. There was one 5MK that sold for $1,500. I also want to note that there is two different versions of this card. There's one with yellow ink for the name and also one with the white ink. At number seven, we have a test issue by Tops, and that is the 1967 Punch Out. These are extremely tough to find. I haven't seen any at any card shows. Looking at a five grade, you're going to be paying about $1,500. An eight has also sold for $2,400. Our last card before the honorable mentions is from 1955, technically Hank Aaron's second year with cardboard, and that is the Spick and Spawn. Couldn't really find too many sales of it, but a three sold close to $3,000. Now for the honorable mentions, I wanted to say three specific cards. There's a ton that I could have put in the list, but here's a few with some sales data to back it up. Up first, we have the 1964 Venezuela, which is his first Venezuelan card. These are extremely tough to source. One is going to cost you between like $100 and $200. There was a four that sold slightly over $1,000. Up next is the 1962 Pittsburgh exhibits. These exhibits are actually desirable in comparison to some of the others that are out there. He has two different ones in the set, a king and also a nine. The king and a four sold for $800. And lastly, we have the 1972 Topps Cloth. These were hand-cut cards, extremely tough to source. A six sells for $600, whereas a 10 has sold for $1,800. So we have our first rookie card on the list, and this is the 1954 Johnston Cookies. This is a lot harder to source than the 1954 Topps, which is a little bit later on. A really, really cool oddball release to have in your PC. Now, if you're going to find a low grade option, you're going to be paying at least $2,500 and upwards. An eight has sold for $10,000, which is a lot, but that Topps rookie is even more expensive. Up next, we have a 2003 Stadium Club dual signer card on card of both Willie Mays and Hank Aaron, two of the greatest home run hitters of the 50s through the 60s. A 10 has recently sold for eight thousand dollars which is absolutely incredible so while this video itself only has 10 cards you guys should check out the article which is going to be linked down below for over 50 different hank aaron cards all the way ranging from the 1950s to the early 2000s i couldn't cover all 50 on one video so make sure to check that article and the link is down below in the description up in the number three spot we have another autograph card of Hank Aaron, and that is a 2000 Upper Deck numbered to 44. One of these actually recently sold for $8,000, which is, it's really crazy. But Hank Aaron has a, actually an earlier card from 1999. To my knowledge, this is the first dual combo 
of his where it has a relic and an autograph card. Now, if the 2000 card sold for 8000 I would assume the 1999 which is a little bit more popular, would reach that five-figure threshold. Extremely low number, and they just really don't pop up to market that often. Number one should be no surprise, and that is the 1954 Tops, one of the most iconic cards when people think of Hank Aaron. This card is really expensive in low grades. A one will hover around $2,000, and it depends on the eye appeal, whether there's creases, paper loss on the back or the front, and also centering. Those 54s can be really tough to find centered at times. But what's even more incredible is the high graded versions of these. There's a nine, there's two nine sales actually that have sold recently between 400 and 600,000. So you can average those about 500K. But what's more even incredible is there is a PSA 10 out there. It sold a long time ago, but if it went to auction today, it would be well over $1 million. If you want to learn about more really cool cards, I recommend checking out Pete Rose, the hit king. He has some really cool test issue cards and you can watch the video right here.